Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. Writing has a reputation for being a lonely, solitary act, but that doesn't always have to be the case. The new novel, Eruption, has a few cooks in its kitchen. It was originally an unfinished manuscript by the late Michael Crichton, and it was finished by best-selling writer James Patterson, along with Sherry Crichton, Michael's wife. In this interview with Empire's Ari Shapiro, James and Sherry talk about collaborating, how they would send ideas and outlines back and forth, all in the service of completing someone else's vision. That's coming up. This message comes from NPR sponsor Stars, presenting the new series Three Women. Based on the best selling book by Lisa Tadeo, Three Women follows a writer played by Shailene Woodley, who persuades three spectacular, ordinary women to tell her their stories, and her relationships with them change the course of her life forever. Starring Shailene Woodley, Betty Gilpin, DeWanda Wise, and Gabrielle Creevy. Watch the season premiere of Three Women September 13th, only on Stars and the Stars app. Two of America's best-selling fiction authors have collaborated on a new book, James Patterson and Michael Crichton. What makes this especially remarkable is that Michael Crichton died of cancer nearly 16 years ago, but his wife Sherry found an unfinished manuscript, and James Patterson took it over the finish line. The novel is called Eruption. James Patterson and Sherry Crichton, welcome to All Things Considered. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sherry, did Michael talk about this project with you while he was alive, or did you just discover it after he passed? He didn't really speak about any project when he was alive. It was always his private work, but he spoke about this one. And I think the reason why he spoke about this volcano story is because it was so close to his heart. It takes place in Hawaii, a place that he loved for years. He would always go to the big Island. Um, and that's where he would take his moments of relaxation and recuperation and where his creative mind just flowed. And, um, and then we of course lived on Kauai. And so when we're on hikes, um, he would talk about volcanoes. Hmm. And did you always know that this manuscript would someday be finished and published? Tell us about why it took more than a decade. It took more than a decade because I I needed to do a lot of things. First, I had to start an archive. And when I found the manuscript, uh, the partial manuscript, rather, it was it was just a big mystery. It's like, where is the rest? And it was an amazing amount of research. Trust me, because <laughs> I saw a lot of it. And, and that's part of what makes the, the, the novel so uh, interesting to read. You With a Michael Crichton novel, you're always going to learn a lot of things. So, James, did you get more than a partial manuscript? Did you get boxes and boxes of volcano research? Yes, a, a couple of boxes for sure. Yes, a lot of research and some videos. Um, for starters, I had read all of Michael's work. I, I was a massive Michael Crichton fan. I had not met him, but I loved his novels, uh, had seen the movies, etc. cetera. Uh, secondly, it was just an incredible challenge for me because Michael writes with a lot of science, and I don't. So that was a very cool thing. Also, this kind of novel uh, is bigger than life, bigger than anything kind of blockbuster. And then then to do it well, there just hasn't been one in a while. So I just thought and and, and in the in this story, there are kind of two ticking clocks or two very strong storylines. One is this volcano, which threatens to literally destroy Hawaii. And the other thing, and this once again comes from Michael's research, this toxic waste material, which people didn't know was on the island. And and if that if that waste is hit by the lava or the earthquakes or whatever, it's a disaster for the world. So we're we're describing it as a partial manuscript. How partial was it? Are we talking about half the book written, ninety percent, or what? We kind of don't talk that through. We, we but there was there was work to be done. But 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 I'll tell you, the other attraction for me is that that story that that double whammy was in there, and I just found that irresistible. And you know, my joke to Sherry was. I, I I I have to do this because I want to know the how how the hell it ends. <laughs> <laughs> so Sherry, did you say to James? I mean, f- forgive the Jurassic Park metaphor, but did you want him to treat what Michael had written as encased in amber, like don't touch what was already written? Or James, did you have the freedom to rewrite plot points and throw out characters if you thought that best served the finished novel? I had totally had freedom, but I did not want to do it. There was very little that I changed about what Michael had written. I moved it 10 or 12 years later 
because I thought that was useful, because obviously a lot of things have happened in Hawaii. But but for the most part, no, I, I loved what he had written. I, I had no interest in changing most of it. Sherry, what did it feel like to read the completed text for the first time when James handed it back to you? It started off with with Jim sending me an outline, and I was on pins and needles waiting. I mean, I, I have to say— So you were part of the process while he was working on it. I was part of the Jim, tell him how much we saw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We would—, we would uh, Go back and forth every week. You know, when you go into to to do any collaboration, you can only hope that you're met with the same respect that you're putting in. Jim did that twofold. It was so beautiful to see how much he honored Michael's work and his vision and also honored the research and really the love of the island. When I finally got the final manuscript so I could read it again, and we had I, I've been reading Michael's partial manuscript. For years. So as you can imagine, I became very um, attached to his words and how he was, you know, laying out his story. So when I got the entire manuscript, I'm like, it's seamless. I mean, our challenge to everyone listening, we dare you to point out where Michael's writing ended and where mine started, because there is a point. I don't think people will figure it out. Oh, there is a seam. There is like the last word that Michael wrote and the first word that you wrote. There is, yeah. All right, so that's the mystery for readers to solve. James, you've worked with so many co-authors, from Bill Clinton to Dolly Parton. What's it like to collaborate with somebody who is no longer alive to bounce ideas back and forth with? Well, Jerry was was available. And Michael also, in in what he had written, um, there was a tone there already. And and that's a huge thing, the voice. What's the voice going to be? Any novel that you do, that's that's the first thing you have to solve. And the two uh, ticking clocks had already been set up. Sherry, you have been involved with this project for so long, and I am assuming there are no more partial manuscripts that your husband left behind. Is there something bittersweet about releasing this out into the world and knowing that it is likely the last book that will have your late husband's name on the cover? Well, um, or are there other partial manuscripts? <laughs> there are other. Michael left a lot of work behind. Okay. He was like truly unstoppable in his creativity. He danced from his science fiction to the adventure to the historical fiction. He was constantly working. He was not ready to go. It was not his time. But this book in particular is really very special to me because I can see the continuity of so many years that he put into the research and his fascination with the volcanoes from the time that we can count back and see photos in the 70s to uh, all through his travels um, to the time that you look at all the research and the digital files and the paper files. I mean, the clippings, they're all over the place. So this has a lot of history and a lot of passion. This makes me feel good that it is out there. And it would be selfish of me to hold this back to myself and just go, okay, that was great. And I'm going to keep it as a partial manuscript. No, this needed the voice and somebody who could compliment Michael so beautifully as Jim has done. And the two of them working together on this, I really say together as if Michael were still here, because as, as the person on the other side, I see this beautiful, you know, orchestration, this duet, if you will, of these two great authors coming together. So this has been an extraordinary experience and very joyful for me. Well, Sherry Crichton and James Patterson, it has been such a pleasure talking to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you very, very much. The new novel by James Patterson and the late Michael Crichton is called Eruption. This message comes from NPR sponsor Merrill. Whatever your financial goals are, you want a straightforward path there. But the real world doesn't usually work that way. Merrill understands that. That's why, with a dedicated Merrill advisor, you get a personalized plan and a clear path forward. Go to ml.com slash bullish to learn more. Merrill, a Bank of America company. What would you like the power to do? Investing involves risk. Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner & Smith, Incorporated, Registered Broker Dealer, Registered Investment Advisor, Member SIPC. This message is brought to you by Warby Parker. Their glasses start at $95, including anti-reflective, scratch-resistant prescription lenses that block 100% of UV rays. Try five pairs of frames at home for free. Go to warbyparker.com slash covered.